Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the Finding Peace Within podcast. I am your host, Miss Lisa L. Dalton. If this is your first time visiting the Finding Peace Within podcast, let me say welcome to the podcast. If you are a repeat guest, I want to say welcome back to the podcast. The Finding Peace Within podcast was created so that you could find your authentic self through spiritual awareness. And how do you do that? Well, you do it by studying the Word of God, identifying what needs to be changed, and doing the work that's required to make that change. Now, if you would like to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, You can just Google my name, Lisa L. Dalton, and you will find me there. You can go to my website, findingpeacewithin.org, and you can see all the books I've written. You can see some of the blogs I've written as well and the workout videos that I've created. Now, if you have not gotten my latest book, Today's Investment, Tomorrow's Return, you can go to Amazon, Google my name, Lisa L. Dalton, and you can order the book there. It will bless you really, really good. This is my motto. What you do in your 30s will be a blessing to you in your 50s and beyond. It's important that we take care of ourselves while we're young. Just like the Bible says, it's best that you get to know God in your youth so you can do a lot more for him as you mature in the word of God. Now today we're going to talk about transforming your suffering. Mm. Transforming your suffering as you look back over your life, as you look back over the year. um, Today is a new year for us, 2023. And today you may take some time to reflect on the last year, 2022, what you've been through, what God has done for you um, in 2022. And, um, And then maybe you need to identify some things that you need to change this year. First, give thanks and then identify some things you need to change moving in 2023. And as y'all know, I like to open up with a short word of prayer. Lord, we thank you today. Oh God, we honor your name and we praise you, oh Lord, for being our Savior, our Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for letting us see another year that was not promised to us. Now, Lord, as I teach this lesson about transforming transforming our sufferings, let the word be, um, be given with understanding and reception so that we all can be better for you and in this year of 2023. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, amen, and amen. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. It's, um, it's great to be alive. As my grandmother would say, it's great to be among the living. And I'm excited about what God is going to be doing in my life and in your life. Now, let's talk about this thing, transforming your sufferings i did put on the end to freedom (laughs) because there is a reason for what we go through there is a reason for suffering and as i begin to study this lesson and look back at the things that god has done for me in my life i began to realize that there were some sufferings and i took those sufferings and i made something beautiful out of it Philippians 3 and 10. Let's go there. Philippians 3 and 10 is where Paul is talking about the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Let's read that. Philippians 3 and 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means, this is 11, by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Mm, Wow. That I may know him and that him is Jesus Christ from and the power of 
No, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. When we think about transforming sufferings, let's look at that word first. Transform. What does the word transform mean? Transform means to make a feral or dramatic change in the form of something. The appearance or character of something. Now, y'all, I grew up with Transformers more than meets the eye. And today there still has Transformers. You know, the movie, I think it's like probably got three or four Transformer movies. So what happens there? A car becomes a big, gigantic monster robot or whatever where it's able to fight off evilness. Of course, one's good and one's bad. And they fight for the common for a common good. Now, when we are transformed, we are changed from what we were. Now, your physical body won't change unless you're working out and, you know, you transformed your body. But your soul, your character will change when you are transformed. So when you he says here. That let's go back to 10. I should have highlighted this thing that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. We want to change in the things that we were from the suffering. How do you transform your suffering? And what is suffering? I looked that word up too. It says an experience are being subjected to something unpleasant or bad. It's like I suffered a loss. I suffered, you know, some illness. And even a, a suffering is a loss, a loss of something. Um, when you suffer a loss, that means what you had, you don't have anymore. When you're suffering from a loss. Now, it says here, we are suffering from something. We're transforming what we lost into something good. Mm, that's good stuff. It's hard for us to look at a lost and consider it something good. You know, it's, it's almost impossible for us to even fathom that it was good for us to lose Something Was it good for me to lose my home? Mm. Was it good for me to lose a child? Was it good for me to lose my father? Was it good for me to lose my grandmother? You know, when we think of death, we say, oh my God, they're gone. What am I going to do? If it wasn't good for me to lose my job. Absolutely. We're thinking, no, it's not good for me to lose my job. Now, how am I going to pay my bills? How will I be able to take care of my family? How are we going to eat when we think about a loss? When I lost my job in 2012, after being there for 20 something years, I, um, yes, I was devastated in the beginning, you know, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit prepared me for what was to come. Therefore, it wasn't so traumatic for me or devastated. But what happened out of that, I transformed that suffering into really building my spirit. And then I realized that my circle was so small because all my friends was co-workers. So and then in that, the Lord gave me the opportunity to serve in other areas, I was able to volunteer at the Park and Rec Center. I was able to do my fitness business full time. My spiritual walk got stronger and stronger with the Lord. I took that suffering. I transformed it into a freedom that I didn't even know I had. I wrote my books after I lost my job. So the author in me was birth out. Y'all know a lot of stuff that we have that we're doing now was already there, but it took a suffering moment for that thing to manifest. It took a loss for that thing to manifest. A lot of businesses are created from a loss.
Mm, that's good stuff. A lot of businesses are created from a loss. Let's keep moving on. Now, being transformed from our sufferings. And he says, and the fellowship of his sufferings. To fellowship means to be a part of something. You know, where fellowship at church means I'm a part of a community where I go and interact. How was it for Jesus and his suffering? Can I experience maybe not that level of suffering, but just to understand that his suffering was for a reason. Ah, that's a good word. The suffering was for a reason. Jesus just didn't get hung on the cross for not. It was for a reason. Are you able to look at your sufferings and see it as a reason for this happening? Are you able to do that? Man, it takes some courage, it takes wisdom and some spiritual maturity to realize that this suffering was for a reason. Let's look at the word conformable. Now he says, being conformed to his death. What does conformed mean? I was like being conformed to his death. Y'all, when we read certain scriptures, we miss very important words. So I looked up the word conformed, conformable, because it says being conformed to his death, willing to apply, conformable, willing to apply, to adapt, to accept. Jesus Christ was able to apply the suffering that he was going through previously and currently to what God had for him to do when he got off the cross and rose from the dead. Now, for us, are you able to take that suffering? Was I able to take losing my job, conform, accept the fact that I lost my job and now produce something positive? It took a minute. It took a minute. But as soon as I understood why I was going through this, I was able to tap into something that was already there. And that was the gift to write and the ability to go and do my fitness business full time. Let me tell you something. We cannot, like Paul says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, man. When we look at the excellence of suffering, it's like, Lisa, you have got to be out of your mind. How can I look at losing my husband or my wife or my child as an opportunity to transform to freedom? When we are conformable, adaptable, able to accept, we're, we can move forward. But when you are in denial and you're not recognizing that something has happened, that something's going on in your life, that God is trying to show you, he can take that beauty. He will give you beauty for your ashes. Oh my God. Yes, he will give you beauty for that suffering. Mm. Conformable to his death, to his purpose. He came here to die to his purpose. What was the purpose of that suffering? What was the purpose of that experience? What can I transform myself or that situation into which would get me to the freedom and the peace I'm looking for? Let's move on. And the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul says, if by any means, by any means necessary, mm, I may attain. And what does attain means? To succeed and achieve a goal. To succeed and achieve through the suffering. God, a little bullshit. What can I succeed and attain through 
this suffering, when I recognize and accept and conform to the lessons that God is trying to show me, what can I attain? Can I attain? Jesus was attaining the death. Paul said, I just, by any means, I just want to be able to suffer through like Jesus. I want to be able to conform like Jesus. I want to be able to walk through this thing knowing I was created for this reason. I, knowing that this suffering right here is going to get to me to where God wants me to be. To the resurrection from the dead. Ah, when we look at the word resurrection, what does resurrection mean? It means to rise up from death. Now, to be resurrected means something was dead. There was no life in it. Not that it was, and it could be dormant as well. And you think, and like the Bible says, Jeremiah said, can these dead bones live? Yes, these dead bones can live, but you got to blow some life on them dead bones. You got to say, who? You got to put your hands on it. You got to anoint it with some oil. You got to speak life into that thing and say, you will live. You shall live and not die. You will live. My God, to rise up the ability to cause things to live again. Resurrection. The ability to live again. My God, you wake up from your ashes. And then you will say, my God, my God, my God, this is much better than I thought. We think life is over when we're suffering. We think what we want to do will never come to pass. What we are uh, trying to attain will never happen. But when you conform and when you submit to transforming your ways, your thinking, your thoughts, then you will rise above it. Mm, thank you, Lord. And then you will say, man, man, God, this was better. It was good that I suffered. It was good that I went through this trial. It was good for me to, to divorce. I was reading um, earlier this week. I was reading through one of my old journals. Y'all know I journal. I have journals from 19... 99, 1998. And here we are, however many years later, and I still journal. But I was reading a journal. Um, it was one of mine from 2005, October 2005. And I was, um, I remember when I wrote that. I was laying in my bed and I was praying to the Lord and I wrote it down. And I said, Lord, I need $1,300 to pay my bills. I need $1,300. I have no money. <laughs> I have no money to pay my bills. And I need you to move for me. I need you to move for me. And then a couple of days later, I wrote, the account is in the negative three times. In the negative three times. And the whole, I remember writing that and the Holy Spirit told me to go to the bank and I went to the bank. It was BB&T at that time. I went to BB&T and I talked to the loan officer and she said, um, do you know you have equity in your home? And I'm like, equity? What are you talking about? You have the ability to borrow money on what you already have. I was like, God, what? So we filled out the paperwork and I got $25,000 off of the equity in my home. I was able to pay my bills and renovate some things in my house and have some money left over. And now fast forward to 2023, I am abundantly blessed. OK, I don't have to sit and write, Lord, I need thirteen hundred dollars to pay my bills. Why? Because the Lord has supplied every one of my needs. But when God sees your heart, when God sees your faithfulness, when God sees how you're serving others, he will bless you. He will give you what you need and some of your wants. Let's recap what we've learned today. We've learned today 
that through our suffering, we can, we need to first conform, be conformable, meaning accept the fact and apply what you're going through as a lesson. What lesson did you learn in this suffering? Then you got to begin to believe that you can attain. You got to transform the way you look at it. You got to be able to change your mind, your thinking, change the way you're moving about in the world. You got to sometimes you got to say, I ain't moving like that no more. I ain't hanging with that one no more because that right there doesn't work well for me. When I do this, this is what happens. You got to take another route. Put it in your GPS, your God positioning system and say, Lord, you got my feet. That was good. God positioning system and say, Lord, you got my feet. Where are we going today? And then we're going to resurrect, bring that thing that is dead or was dead alive again. We will apply the word of God. We will apply our faith. We will apply what we've learned from this suffering and we're going to rise up. We're going to come up like Jesus. We say we're going to rise like the Phoenix, but we're going to come up with Jesus here because Jesus's life was for a purpose. Jesus's death was for a purpose. Jesus's suffering was for a purpose. So we can count it all joy. We're going to accept it and we're going to change. We're going to make a difference when we look at our suffering and transforming that to freedom. Man, I'm telling you, I think I am in a place of peace I, I didn't even know existed because I have really tapped into believing God. I believe God can do abundantly, not just reading the word, but I believe it today. I know because he's done it for me. And I want you to have that same type of transforming faith. I have that transforming faith that you can take your suffering, you can transform it and be free. Wow. That was a good word. Mm. Lord, we thank you for this word on today. Oh God, we honor you. We praise your name. Lord, I pray that this lesson was a blessing to someone who has suffered a loss. Let them realize that they can conform their thinking. They can conform what has happened to them and transform it into something beautiful. You said in your word that you would take our ashes and make them beautiful. Our test will now become a testimony which we will overcome. We ask today that you be with us as we continue to walk out our soul salvation. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I hope you were blessed by the word. Share this podcast with someone. Share this YouTube video with someone. Let them know they too can be transformed through their suffering to freedom. Now, you go make it a wonderful, wonderful day, a wonderful week. And as I always say, a centered soul is a centered mind. Be blessed.